join you there. Um, I don't know, I'm sure most of you know that it is, uh, it has the potential of being one of the, or it is one of the most chronic problems in America today. One of these diseases that if we don't take care of it, we can't have long-term side effects such as osteomyelitis, and toes, you know, amputation, blindness, might be experienced. Um, so I'm going to talk about some of the things that we can do to help with that. Um, I'm going to talk about the things that we can do to help with that. You know, thanks to research and development by the ADA, JRF, doctors, pharmaceutical companies, it's one of the few diseases that we take the bull by the horns and you know, take control of it, we can eliminate the risk of all these side effects. Uh, although I may look 16 years old, the dental said I've actually done that over 23 years now. And over those 23 years, I've tested my blood sugar approximately 75,000 times, <laughs> myself about 50,000 shots, and thanks to diet and exercise, I've come. You know, very close, if not eliminating all the risk of long-term damage. Now, these are things that uh, didn't just snap and happen overnight. They're things I was trained and trained well to by my parents, like all of you, your parents out here today. Uh, my mother, she taught me very well. She taught me so well that my first two words were not mama and dad, rather they were mama and OJ. <laughs> <laughs> dad was disturbed. <laughs> And she taught me as I was growing up to, you know, she wanted me to achieve a lot of things in life, but first she wanted me to live a healthy and long life and not have any long-term complications based on my diabetes. She also wanted me to be a very active person, exercise, that really helps you control your diabetes. She wanted me to help others. Now, I'd like to imagine this, and your parents might be able to imagine a little bit better than the kids, but as you're the mother of a healthy seven-month-old baby boy, you know, always smiling and happy, Except in occasional sense. But then one day your 25 pound baby boy is crying incessantly, urinating frequently, and he's constantly thirsty. This baby boy over a two, two day period loses 10 pounds. Well, he's taking him not one, not two, but three doctors. And these doctors tell you, oh, your kid's got the flu, give him some fluids, he'll be alright in a couple of days. So, thank God for mother, motherly instinct says otherwise. And you take this kid to TMH where within an hour they die, he's not out of here. And an hour later, they also say, if you're coming an hour later, he might be dead. <laughs> so you got options at this point. As a parent, you have options to pamper the kid, bathe him, you know, feed his cake and cookies, and make him happy and smile all the time. Or you can do your research and try to learn, you know, what you have to do and what he has to do to live a long and happy life as a diabetic. So you do this research and you help, you know, you Give your child a little fear, fear of the complications, because you're scared also of what can happen. But you also, you work to help turn the fear and motivation. Motivation to take care of yourself and eliminate the risk of being long term damage. Yeah. Growing up as a parent and as a child, I want to go out and do things like a normal kid. I want to go spend the night parties. Well, my mother fortunately allowed me to do this so I could hang out with my friends, but she was a silent wonder. She'd come out at 7 in the morning test my blood sugar, do my shot, and I can wake up and live the rest of the day without care in the world. So, she was always worrying, but I didn't have to do any of that. <laughs> but you know, all these things, they can't, you, know, you can't control your diabetes without making mistakes. And over the years, you know, we're all going to have eyes, we're going to have wounds, there's going to be ketones, there's going to be you know, seizures, it's inevitable. There's too many protocols out there to eliminate everything. But by educating your friends, and your family, people around you, what to do, you can eliminate, you can stop small problems from becoming big problems. An example of this is my senior year in high school. I've gone through 18 years of schooling with, if I hadn't said anything to anyone about being a diabetic, no one would have I never had problems. No, you know, everything was fine. But then one day I was in the teacher's class my school had offered, and I think the instructions that day were to type your ABCs on the computer screen. For some reason or another, I couldn't quite achieve this. So I walked to my next class without saying a, a word for 10 minutes. And if you were to know me very well, you'd know that if I didn't say anything for 10 minutes, something had to be wrong. <laughs> and he said, I get my next class, and I see James in the next thing. And Jane has a Western Ball Farm in this. But my blood sugar was extremely low at this point. I couldn't think James, my blood sugar's low, give me a Western Ball Farm. So I knew what that's it. Western Ball no, Phil, you're a boot. You're not getting my candy bar. <laughs> What's your call at that point? No, Phil, you're a boot. You always take my food plus you're a diabetic. You can't have this anyway. <laughs> I 
I'm sitting there and I point it the third time I said, what's my, my eyes roll back, my head, and I passed out. Well, fortunately, I listened to my mother, I listened to my doctor, and I told everybody what to do in case of an emergency. So my friends ran across the street to the gas station, my sister called the paramedics, and within 20 problems, the problems was resolved. You know, that was a mistake that I made. You know, I screwed up there, but because I listened to those who were telling me kids, you know, to tell your friends what to do, that they think they stopped small problems from becoming a big problem. So from that point on, I always carried glucose tablets, so I didn't have to depend on the point into what you call it. <laughs> and I got my, my whenever anyone was hungry, we always had a quick excuse to get across the street from food from that point on. <laughs> uh, this was, the funny thing was, was that I walked outside, still a little hazy, and all of you know that if your blood sugar gets low, you don't really work this way. I took the point of Janice and said, you just give me your candy bar, and I know this is what happened. <laughs> She broke down in tears, and then the next day, I felt horrible. Next day at school, I had 10,000 candy weights. <laughs> Thanks, Jane. I obviously don't know how many shots I'm going to have to do. <laughs> so I gave it to my mom, and she feel a little better about the situation. <laughs> but, you know, it's through these trials and errors that you learn to take lessons, and you learn lessons, you learn what to do, and how to better prepare for the next situation. And, you know, I, I have achieved this great control, you know, through the shots, through the diet, through the exercise, and it's mainly, I think most of it's that exercise. And for me, that was like, when I was 12 years old, I fell in love. And when I was a girl, this was my life. I got all started riding with my friends, see how I fell in trouble, had fun, being free. I was also 12 years old, I feel like I really like the Snickers bar. Who are you on Snickers bar? Well, I had two options at 12 years old. I could do a shot and wait two hours down on Snickers bar, or I could go ride my bike for an hour, have a Snickers bar, and then go ride my bike for another hour, having fun all the time, and have another Snickers bar. So I rode my bike, and I rode and I rode and I rode. And this riding adventure turned into racing, and this became a passion of mine. It was something that allowed me to go out there, be independent, be free, and it was also a way for me to be normal. When I rode on my bike racing, I didn't have to check my blood sugar, I didn't have to do shots, I do everything just like any other kid out there would do. I said I would beat him because I was diabetic, so I made me better. <laughs> and you know, cycling has afforded me a lot of great things. It's taken me over three states, excuse me, 30 states, three countries, and the best of all is for me friendships. My, some of my closest friendships today all stem from cycling. Now, one of these stands apart from the rest. My now best friend, Joe Eldridge, was beginning his career back in 2003. <clears throat> At that point, I was winning races, I was the SEC champion, I was ninth place at the S4 National Championships. And Joe and I met. We had everything in common. We all like talking about school, about fights, about girls. Not necessarily that order. But we did. We also had this little, little thing in common though that Joe too was diabetic. But and we're so such alike in every fact of life, except our diabetes. Joe would check his blood sugar one to three times a day, give himself a maximum of three shots a day, and he was doing the bare minimum necessary to stay alive. Joe at that point had an AMC of 10.5. I, on the other hand, thanks to the training by my doctors, my mother, that's right, I was checking my blood sugar 15 times a day, you know, doing up to 10 shots a day to make sure that I was just like my brother. My blood sugar, brother's blood sugar is 90, so I want to be a 90. He's just like the regular people. <laughs> and so, Joe, kinda, Joe told me one time that Philip Monkey ago changed my life. I asked him, I said, what do you mean? And he said, a month ago we got together and we were about to go eat a burrito. So you check the blood sugar. And then he said, Joe, check yours. So he checked the blood sugar. Mine was 97, this is 149. So I did my shot, he did his shot, we went and ate a burrito. And then, 30 minutes after we got to the meeting, we came back and I checked my blood sugar again. I made the check like I always did. Mine was at 149. I didn't do quite enough insulin. Chose the 220, but he was happy because that was post meal blood sugar. I did a small correction though, because like I said, I wanted to be at 90. And Joe was happy and he didn't do a shot. So then, but Joe's a competitive guy, he's a bike racer. He doesn't like to beat. So a month later, he comes back for the next race, and we're sitting there hanging out. And Joe says, hey Phil, check the blood sugar. I was like, alright, it's a little different. 
So I checked mine. It was 114. Not, not too bad. Did my shot go eight? Joe checks his blood sugar. This is 93. Should have stepped back. He beat me for the first time in a long time. But it's been again, even blind school finds out from time to time. So then we go, we go eat our food, we come back 30 minutes later, Joe says, hey, Phil, check the blood sugar. What's going on here? This, this is my job. <laughs> and so I do, he checks his. Mine's 120, his is 140. And immediately he does a shot. He wasn't happy, you know, not being at 90. He said it was at that time that you know, I decided I'm going to eliminate the risk for long term damage. And so Joe asked him, I said, How'd you do it? And he said it was a three week process. I said, Ask him to elaborate a little bit. And he said, The first week, you know, after I crushed him back there, first week he eliminated three three problems that were leading him to bad control. You know, he stopped eating some junk food. He started he stopped not doing shots. He stopped not doing corrections or testing his blood sugar. And then the second week he started to put three new aspects in the life that you know, helped him with his help him to get back in control. He started checking a little more often, doing more shots, and exercising on a more regular basis. And then third week, he made all these changes in the habit. These habits have now helped Joe to take that 10.5 A1C and bring it down to 6.8 in two and a half years, which he's on the way. Uh, so Joe took out his friendship, you know, hopefully, a lifelong time without any complications from diabetes. And what did I get from this? Well, I realized that, hey, I can help Joe, why can't Joe and I? I love the idea. So then get from this old Joe to new Joe. And the idea had been brewing in my head because he's always been involved in the ride cure with and the JDRF walks, the ADA walks, things of that nature. And one day I kind of started thinking a little bit. This was Christmas last year. I didn't have a car, but I still had to come home. And like I said, I'm up at the University of Georgia in Athens. So I decided instead of get my head on the silver platter, I would just ride my bike and see my mom spend half Christmas here. So I did. And I set off on the first day, which was a short 144 miles, eight, about eight and a half hours. And I had three forms of entertainment. I had my bike, because I love to ride. I had my MP3 player, which is new. And I had a cow, so we had a good relationship. I'd say, ooh, and then you would say, ooh. <laughs> About two hours on the ride, I said an inappropriate move, and the cow stopped off the here. So I had a lot of time to take. And typically, I don't think about one thing for maybe two minutes at a time. But you know, it started clicking to me. Well, I'm sitting out here training, I do all this riding, all this racing, put a few dollars in my pocket, pay a little for rent. Why don't, we, why don't we use this riding for a greater good? And I thought about this for six and a half hours. What can we do to? A unified diabetic across the country, motivate them, help them to go from old Joe's to new Joe's, and help them help others. And I called Joe up when I gave the hotel in Monson, Georgia. He said, Joe, here's my idea, what should we do? And he said he should think about it, you know, he said, give me a call tomorrow. So tomorrow I popped back on my bike and I did the remaining 150 miles, which is a little flyer because it only took eight hours that day. And I got home and I called him up and he said, so, so what are we going to do? He said, team type one. All right, that's it. Diabetics is the team. We can all be on this team together and try to you know, eliminate the stereotypes related to diabetes. So team type one, you know, in the long run, what we want to do is help all diabetics get supplies. Because you know, they're not cheap, they're extremely costly. We want to, in the long run, make that more affordable for diabetics. Next year, we've got a little more modest schools. We've got eight personnel type one diabetic team doing Race across, bicycle race across America. The only jersey that you can get in America that has a needle in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, team platform is going to do race across America next year with three main goals. These goals are going to show each and every diabetic that you can do you know, anything and everything a non diabetic can do. But after we win this race, we want to let them all know that we can do it better than a non diabetic can do. We also I want you to know that you know, if you want to be successful in any walk in life, be it school, work, you know, exercise, relationships, you have to take care of yourself. You have to have, you know, do the small things necessary to have a good A1C. And our motto is you strive for 6.5, because that is what is going to be a very safe average to have. You want to do a little better? 
go for it. Be ambitious. But yeah. if you take care of yourself, if you're only small steps necessary, it's going to help you in every other facet of life. Because the discipline necessary to take care of your blood sugar, it's not easy. But that discipline can then be transferred to work, to school, to exercise, and help you be even more successful in those facets of your life. Now, our third goal is a little easier. The easiest of a bunch of things. That's if you want to raise a million dollars for JDRF for the year. I know I don't want to check my blood sugar 15 times a day the rest of my life. I'm sure none of you guys want to check your blood sugar 15 times a day the rest of your life, right? <laughs> That's our ultimate goal is a cure of diabetes. But what we want to do, and what I'd like y'all to take out of this today, is to know that diabetes is a good thing. If you grasp onto it, it's still needs to be a diabetic. It helps you, it tells me in every fact of life that I've ever been in. I think I've been more successful in school, work, cycling, because I am not And if you look at it that way, and have a good attitude towards it, then I think you too will have a better grasp. And for your parents, you got to know that your kids are going to be fine. You know, they've got a disease that's going to allow them to be better because they have it. As long as they, you know, if you help them understand, turn that fear into motivation, and have them be motivated to take care of themselves. I would trade a day of my 23 years being a diabetic to not be a diabetic. I feel a little empty if I woke up and then not check my <laughs> So if you already have an A1C where you want to be, if your child has an A1C where they want to be, that's to them back because that's not an easy task. It's not something that you, know, you can wake up overnight and do. It does require a lot of trial and error. So you got to mess up to know what works. you got to know what works to try to not mess up in the long run. And if you're there, that's to them back. But if you're not there, I invite you to please take that three week challenge. Take three weeks to try to make you know, six improvements on your lifestyle that will help you to have better care in the long, the long run. And then three months down the road, you see Dr. Steve and we'll check your A1C and you can find out how that's working for you. And I would also like to ask you to help, help someone else. If you are in that good area, go, go make a friend of another diabetic who's not quite there yet and help them get excited about taking care of themselves. This is easy. If you take by the horns, if you take care of it, you can't eliminate any risk of long term damage. Uh, again, I'd like to say thanks for coming out. It's been a pleasure. And I'm going to put the phone in the questions in y'all might have.
Like, it's just funny to tell your friends what, what to do and get your blood pressure low. You're like, ah, I don't want to tell my friends what to do. But I listen to them, and the life of the guys, they tell all my friends what to do if something happened. So, if something ever did happen, my friends could always come to my rescue and say, like, how do you actually get to keep the blood sugar warm? Blood sugar is getting warm because you're low and stuff. As you ride in the air, take a much cheaper bike because you're much cheaper to go on the road. Well, when I'm riding, I'll drink my Gatorade. Uh, I always get that thing. We're good. It's like, what about us? So, this is a, I'll, I'll always have Gatorade with me, um, as well as a, a Snickers bar or, or Skittles, some sort of. I like to use a candy can that or they tell me I can't use. <laughs> and so, you don't really have to check, but one thing you gotta do is you know, always have food, always have money in your IV on you. And so that way, if something, God forbid, something does happen, that people will be able to fix it. It's given that you have such great control, how often do you get people? I don't get it. But it's, you know, I check my blood sugar 15 times a day, not because it, you know, it's something that I love to do. Because if you check it that often, you'll always know where it's at or where it's going. And so, you know, my blood sugar gets in the 300 just like anybody else does, but it'll never stay there for long. Because as soon as I see that my blood sugar is going up rapidly or at the 300 level, then I'll do a big correction and try to get it down as quickly as possible. And when you're younger, it's not quite as easy, you know, because you get sick, things happen. And there's always curveballs out there, so it's just about making, you know, Instead of living an adjusted life with sense of normalcy, you know, live a very normal life and make a lot of small adjustments along the way. Yes, sir. Can you talk? Yes, sir. I'm a little junkie. <laughs> well, I've, I've had very good fortune and been able to take care of myself very well with meals. And I'm afraid I didn't have a 5,000 dollar machine on my dirty tonight to crash a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. The only continued, uh, I think we try to continue this monitoring system. I study by Abbott, it's called the Navigator. And I told him my, my blood sugar every minute on the dot. And that, that was kind of cool because if my blood sugar is going low, then it gives us a notch of beat. And at the middle of the day, I'm in a meeting with the client, and I'm like, beep, beep, beep. And she's actually a good producer. She's not here to be shot. The pump. Yeah, it does, they are great things, and I think they work very well for some people. It's just, I don't want to fix what's not broken. How do we keep up with team with diabetes, and then how can we help you and your team? You check our, our website, it's team type 1.org. I've got cards here, and so I'll give you contact information. More than that, and we're trying to, right now we need to raise $237,000 to or actually, based on the sponsorship we've got, I actually cut down to about 187 now. And we're hoping to use this to, as we race across the country, get in front of every diabetic and every non diabetic. We don't know. We're just like everybody else, except we do a shot here and there, a finger here and there, and then raise a million dollars in the process. Yes, sir. Did you freeze? When you told me what you did, so I did. But they pretty much, in general, accepted when you learned what to do. Yeah, they were real receptive. I told them, basically what I told my friends is, hey, if I'm acting dumb, I don't want to do it. Smacking around and making me check my blood sugar. And there, there were times where I didn't want to check my blood sugar, and they were there for me, and they knew what to do. The bad thing is, I had some close calls, but for the most part, the things that I write, they were all there saying, hey, Phil, they just check the blood sugar, see if you're right. And, you know, they would always carry extra sugar for me, because I would ask them to, and I would always carry fun little amounts. We would just have a bunch of fun, you make friends, and carry food around. So, you can see that. Do you see the chrome nets? It's chrome nets. So, 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 so. I, I, I'm not seeing spots. No. There's some of the time, 
sometimes when I'm real active, the days are done, it'll be hard for me to get my blood sugar up at night. And so if I'm sitting there, there's been times where I just, I did a total, one day I did a total of 19 units and went throughout the entire day. And I cut my legs down from 20 to 13, but still at night,